Now, here's the star, Eric Zane! Hold on. Hold on. Zane! Zane! Hello. Uh, so, I'm thinking maybe I do a little Tim Allen thing. Send me, like, a shirt of whatever school lives in your area that you represent, like, uh, the North Muskegon Norseman. Somebody reached out and said, what the hell do you have that for? And I'm like, uh, well, you know, uh, I was camping one time and I ran out of warm clothes. So I went into a Rite Aid in, in this area, and, uh, lo and behold, I'm, uh, I'm a Norseman. So, uh, yeah, it's great. North Muskegon. Uh, welcome in to the Eric Zane Show from the Back Alley Comedy Club Auxiliary Studio. That's right. Where at Back Alley Comedy Club, Friday and Saturday, Donnell Rawlings is going to be there. And I just saw a, uh, a bit with Donnell Rawlings on uh, Burt Kreischer's Something's Burning uh, video podcast. And it was excellent. I was just, uh, those guys had so much fun. And, uh, man, it, he just published it, like, uh, yesterday, Bert did. And, uh, so I'm super stoked about having that guy in here. Um, I'm always anxious about what the comics think when they get wind of visiting some guy's house, some jerk's house. But then again, I visited Bert's house. I'm sure it's a lot nicer house. Bert's got a hell of a lot of money, I'm sure. Uh, definitely more than what I have. Uh, but uh, still, Donnell is a uh, is a stalwart in comedy and um, has done just about everything there is in the biz. And he is coming to snowy Michigan. Let's start there, shall we? This weather is just killing the Midwest. Oh my gosh, the snow, the wind, the dreadfully dangerous temperatures. You know... It's a real sucker punch from winter. Do you remember when I was talking about the um, snow on Sunday? And before it even started, the school superintendent closed the school for Monday. Stand by. This is going to happen a lot until I get rid of this uh, cold bug. <coughs> <coughs> but that's what we got to do. Got to keep the show going. Well, uh, the mighty Tom Tenbrin closed school on Sunday night. That's rare. But then, in an unprecedented maneuver, yesterday, he closed school for Tuesday and Wednesday. He didn't even wait. He just knows for a fact, and all the other superintendents are doing that. You know it's rough when in a part of the country where snow is not that big of a deal because we get a ton of snow where I live, um, if they close two days like in advance, that's I've never ever witnessed that ever in 48 and however many 48 years and however many months, I've never witnessed a school superintendent ahead of time saying, "Yep, yeah, it's just done for the next couple of days," and who knows after that? I mean, we're sitting right now at an a, an absurdly cold temperature for any part of the world, frankly. Uh, where I sit right now, it is six, but the with the wind, it's minus 14. And um, so tonight, in the middle of the night, uh, it'll be down to minus 6. So that'll probably be much closer to minus 25 or so um, with the wind. Holy cow. And now we're getting a lot of this, uh, what's called lake effect snow. If you're not familiar with that, the uh, big bad lake churns out all this moisture and these uh, crazy... Uh, amounts of snow just get dumped on us. Man. So uh, that's been the story around here. And so, like, they're closing the uh, interstates and the freeways, and there's been all sorts of pileups not far from here. There was, like, a 25-car deal. And thank, there were injuries, too. Lots of people got hurt. This is, this is no joke. I haven't heard if anybody lost their life. Godspeed if you did. I certainly hope not. But uh, I can't. You know, it goes without saying that there are too many people that drive around and just have like on a sweatshirt or like a hoodie. I saw these two young dummies getting gas today. And they're driving around in a snowstorm with nothing. Now, if something goes wrong, they ditch a car, nobody sees them, they're dead. You got nothing. How could you possibly do that? <laughs> Excuse me. So this is my public service announcement to you. Don't get caught out driving with like nothing to protect you in the event something goes south. 
But the fact of the, uh, of the matter remains, they don't want anybody driving, period. It's that bad. These poor plow guys. These guys are like work for this uh, city and, uh, and the county. And they go like uh, hours and hours on end. Oh, man, I do not envy you. I'll do my best to give you as long of a podcast as I can. So maybe while you're, if there are a few of you that are listening to this, while you're clearing off our roads, Godspeed. Keep it between the lines. If you hit a mailbox, that's a, it happens. That's what, uh, that's the cost of doing business when you live right on the side of the road. You ever drive by a place where the, like the guy who, um, uh, lives where he lives and he's always tired of getting like his mailbox hit. He tries to come up with like ingenious ways to keep, um, the mailbox from getting destroyed. And I don't know if there's really any trick to it. I saw one guy who installed like a wooden, uh, wedge, almost like if the snow goes flying at the mailbox, it'll hit the wooden obstruction first. It's like a wedge and kind of, um, softens the blow in a unique way, but it looks like shit. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, be careful out there and uh, do take it slow. Have you gotten snow tires? My God, I told you on BBL, you need snow tire, t uh, tires. I can't even talk. Sorry. I'm really wound up today. Um, yeah, and I've got like this, this fever of like wanting to get out of the house now. I'm starting to get antsy. I'm starting to feel better. I'm turning the corner physically. After this illness, I'm getting my strength back. Uh, but I, I can't really go out and it just sucks. Diana and I went to Meyer today. Some lady caught my eye and I think she listens either that or she wanted me. Um, and I think she might, may have been a listener. I had a concerned look on my face at the time. I was bummed out about something that happened. Um, so, you know, to that lady, hi, I saw you. I saw you. I don't think you want me. I don't think anybody does. Is there anybody listen, listening who like, I am like, um, they're, they're like wet dream, uh, male or female. I, I'm anxious. You don't have to say who you are. I just need to know at some point if that's, well, then of course, if you reached out to me, you'd be you'd be revealing yourself. So yeah, I don't want you to do that. I don't even know why I asked that, frankly. I wish I hadn't. I feel like a first-class douchebag now. What, what type of animal would ask that question? I'm putting together the pieces right now for the Eric Zane Show podcast, Drumline Wake Up. And I, I mentioned it yesterday, and I have uh, a person who wants to do it, a, a person who listens to the podcast, and uh, this person has a young person that lives with them, his son or daughter, I, forget, I think it's a daughter. And um, she, on the weekend, would sleep 22 hours, he says. And what, if you haven't heard this yet, um, I have uh, reached out to a drum line through my friends at the Grand Rapids Drive. And I said, look, do you want in? They're like, what's up? I go, well... I need cymbals, I need toms, I need big bass drum, I need snares. We're going to go over to this person's house, be all set up, ready to go. They're going to let us in, and then we're going to bust in with the drums. Um, it was either this, or I was going to have Stu McAllister with a roll of duct tape in one hand and a knife in the other bust into this chick's room. But I figured that would be too much. So the drum it is, the uh, drum line it is. And I think it's going to be awesome. I do have some concerns, um, like, what if we open up the door and, you know, there was something that's very private that's happening at, right at that moment when it doesn't matter who, I mean, if it's a boy or a girl, I, I think that that does concern me somewhat, but it, that, that might be on the parent, right? Or the person who's setting up the prank. It might be like, make that video that much more amazing if we, uh, if we burst into there and something, a very private moment is going on. Or maybe she's like getting changed or something like that. So that's a little bit of a concern. I'm going to have to make sure that dad signs a rather thick uh, uh, document saying that we are not responsible. I mean, like if we burst in and she's nude, I mean, it's not like I'm going to take the footage and post it. I mean, but I can't think of anything more mortifying than that. 
So I'm a little bit concerned. Maybe the simple remedy is just to have dad like peek inside, you know, and then if she still is, because I, you know, I would hate it if something like terrible happened. So anyway, if you have a suggestion or I, you have a person who you think would like to be a recipient of an Eric Zane Show podcast, drumline wake up, do reach out, eric at ericzanecho.com, and we can get after it. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> this is so difficult to do. Um, frankly, I don't know how I got this far, being this sick, um, and doing these podcasts. Uh, I got ahead of myself before I wanted to finish my thought about the cold. They're calling this the polar vortex. Now, I'm like, where did I hear of this? And it's only that this term was coined like only four or five years ago. 2014, some smart guy decided to call it that. That is the mass of hair that is above the, um, I guess, North Pole, the top of the planet. And it's super cold. And it normally is, is always cold. And uh, it, it spins counterclockwise, so they call it a vortex. Um, and it's cold, so it's the polar vortex. Now, you may be like, well, what's going on? Why is it moving here? Does this have anything to do? Does this mean global warming does not exist? No, it has nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing. It's always there, like in a disk above the North Pole. And from what I'm, I have described to me, for some reason, it dips and it drops down into North America us and it just so happens that it happens to hit uh, right around the great lakes this time so that's it um why is this cold blast happening according to an article on vox.com uh, blame that mass of frigid air that usually circulates in the arctic and is dipping southward into the continental u.s this week uh isn't anything out of the ordinary or all that new even though the term is. Uh, what is it? Area of low pressure surrounding both of Earth's poles that keeps the cold air trapped in the north. Sometimes during the winter, the jet stream dips southward, sending cold Arctic air into the U.S. Just like your old pal Eric said. And uh, then eventually it just kind of goes back up. Occasionally it goes down even further, but that's it. Uh, nevertheless, they say vodka freezes at minus 21 degrees Fahrenheit. So go test that out. Great. All I know, it's cold as hell. I haven't even bothered plowing the snow in the driveway. I'm going to do that tomorrow. It's just, it hasn't stopped falling. We've gotten socked with where I live. Because believe it or not, where we live, we get more snow here than like 15 miles uh, inland uh, to the east. In Michigan, it's a peninsula, obviously. But closer to the lake you are, the more snow you get. We're sitting right now at my house at a uh, one foot seven inches. That's right, 19 inches of snow since uh, this weather event started. Unbelievable. All right, going over some articles that folks sent in to me. Figured I'd go over them with you for the free podcast. Before I do that, though, uh, do think about becoming a patron member to the Eric Zane Show. You uh, can get there through ericzaneshow.com. If you want extra Eric Zane Show, and believe me, you do, I cover a lot of ground in today's extra podcast. Go to ericzaneshow.com and click on the Patreon link. Okay? For starting at $5 a month, you get five, that's right, five extra podcasts every single week. And uh, I'll just say that on the Patreon podcast, that's a little bit more loosey-goosey with um, a lot less concern for being reckless. Let's just put it that way. I like this, but the Patreon, the people that pay for it, it gets a little bit more loosey-goosey. Uh, for 10 bucks a month, you get the video that goes along with the recording of those podcasts and any other videos that I post that uh, deem worthy, like the Eric Zane Show podcast Drumline Wake Ups those will be there, and so on and so forth. 
EricZaneShow.com. Click on the Patreon link and you will be all set to support the show with your hard-earned dollars. I appreciate those who have signed up in the past for five and ten dollars a month. Now, um, I think it was my buddy Matt who emailed me a story that uh, caught his attention about a way to make it so that funeral costs are not that high for you. Have you ever wondered about how much it's going to cost to bury someone? Well, it's not cheap. Um, going to a funeral home, you know, they, uh, they get you on the, uh, the coffin, all the services, all of these things, and then, of course, the cemetery plot. You're looking at, um, uh, on the cheap end, uh, $10,000, probably more than that. This article talks about how the trend is starting to get out there of people chucking their loved ones out to sea like in the ocean, or I guess even the Great Lake. According to the article, uh, a number of people have been doing this, and it's easier than some might think. Uh, over the weekend, a guy on Reddit discovered a conspicuous page on the Environmental Protection Agency's website, a page devoted to the legal right to be buried at sea. And it's true. According to the website, you can easily be buried at sea as long as you follow a few rules followed set by the Environmental Protection Agency. And then they say, in fact, it's probably easier to be buried at sea than to renew your driver's license. Holy crap. Check this out. First, you have to obtain what's known as an MPRSA, Marine Protection Research and Sanctuaries Act General Permit. Not hard to do. This allows for any human remains being transported from the U.S. into nearby ocean waters. However, you do not need to apply for a permit prior to burial, as long as you apply for one within 30 days of the burial. So you can do this and then apply. What? You can find and contact your local region's EPA representative to do this. That's easy. You do not have to be cremated, but if you're choosing to be buried in a casket, the casket must contain a minimum of 20 2-inch holes, must weigh at least 300 pounds, and one that cannot float. But you don't need a casket! If you're foregoing a casket, the EPA recommends wrapping a natural fiber or cloth and adding additional weight so that the body sinks Materials that are not easily degraded, like plastic, a plastic, plastic are not allowed within uh, with your body. Human remains must be released at least three miles away from any U.S. shore. It still doesn't make clear whether it has to be an ocean or not. If you're a veteran, you may be able to make a special arrangement through the U.S. Navy or Coast Guard. Uh, and that's it. That's it. I thought that this would be a little bit more complex, but apparently not. You know, I would be worried, though, if I did this. Let's say uh, I buried uh, somebody I knew, I, and, and, and they wanted to be buried at sea, and we did that. My first concern is there is no way in hell, knowing my luck, that uh, it's going to work out, that, that it's, the, the body's going to get caught up in the, in the whatever, the current and wind up in somebody's harbor, bouncing up against a boat, or, or a, a group of kids will be swimming, and my body will float up next to them with that huge nose that looks like a dorsal fin on a shark, except half of it will be rotten off because of the fish eating my nose. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't trust this. To me, this is, a, this is a recipe for some type of disaster. So... Uh, this is going around, too. Before I get to that, I do want to mention that uh, the T-shirts are there for you. And I'd love to see you wearing one, for crying out loud, at ericsaintshow.com. The merch is a plenty. You can get a T-shirt. You can get a coffee mug, one of those uh, uh, coffee mugs that keeps everything hot or cold. So, cold coffee, whatever, cold drinks, uh, it, with the Eric Zane Show logo on it, all at ericsaintshow.com. And new stuff coming. I swear I'm, I'm not going to let you down on this. I'm just waiting on the approval from Jericho that we can get started about promoting the new item 
on sale at ericsinshow.com. Stand by. <coughs> oh, I turned one mic down, but not the other one. What a stupid idiot. All right. Uh, chickens that are laying eggs with anti-cancer drugs. What? Yep. There's a story going around right now that um, there are chickens that are being genetically modified to lay eggs with medicine in the eggs. Now, if this is true, and I have no reason to think that it's that it uh, that it isn't true, what the hell took so long? They're saying 100 times cheaper to produce when laid than when manufactured in factories. Researchers believe that in time, production be, can be scaled up to produce medicines in commercial quantities. The chickens do not suffer and are pampered compared to farm animals, according to Dr. Lisa Heron of Roslyn Technologies in Edinburgh, Scotland. I guess that's Scotland. Yeah, it's from the BBC. Uh, they, leave in, they live in very large pens, fed and watered and looked after on a daily basis by highly trained technicians and live quite a comfortable life. I'm kind of all for any type of uh, creatures that are used for either this or even food to living as uh, comfortable of life uh, as, as possible. Just uh, that story when I was driving by and saw the... Uh, a semi truck full of um, uh, turkeys in the freezing cold. It may have been one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my whole life. Those turkeys are probably like, man, those chickens, they got it made. They're just laying eggs and curing cancer. Here I am in the middle of West Michigan, freezing cold, and uh, the, this is the best part of my day. The end of my day, I'm going to get my head stuffed in some grinder. Thanks, Obama. The chickens live in very large pens, are fed and watered and looked after on a daily basis. I already said that. Stupid. As far as the chicken knows, it's just laying a normal egg. That was my first question. Is it like one of those big eggs on Willy Wonka? It doesn't affect its health in any way. It's just chugging away, laying eggs as normal. How is this happening? I need more details. Scientists have previously shown that genetically modified goats, rabbits, and chickens can be used to produce protein therapies in their milk or eggs. The researchers say their new approach is more efficient, produces better yields, and is more cost eff effective than these previous attempts. Production from chickens can cost anywhere from 10 to 100 times less than the factories. So what the hell are they doing here? How is this even a thing? The biggest savings comes from the fact that the chicken Sheds are far cheaper to build and run than highly sterile clean rooms for factory production. Many diseases are caused because the body does not naturally produce enough of a certain chemical or protein. Such diseases can be controlled with drugs that contain the deficient protein. Okay, These drugs are synthetically produced by pharmaceutical companies and can be very expensive to manufacture. Dr. Heron and her colleagues managed to produce the cost by inserting a human gene which normally produces the protein in humans, into the part of the chicken's DNA involved with producing the white in the chicken's eggs. Oh my God! After cracking the eggs and separating the white from the yolk, the doc discovered the chicken had re uh, relatively large quantities of the protein. And then this goes on to more of the specifics as to how they're able to fight disease with this. Oh my God. We're living in the future. Holy crap. Chickens laying eggs with anti-cancer drugs. Absolutely amazing. And finally, there's this. Some idiot decided that he was going to try at the Toronto airport to smuggle something in. And he thought, well, there's no way I'll get caught. Apparently, leeches are big business. I'm not sure why. I think it says here in a little bit. But some guy was at the airport with 5,000 leeches. 
a collection of Southern medicinal leeches. They can go for about $10 each. Uh, so these ones uh, were actually endangered. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but the guy would use these leeches and sell them to people for big money. Leeches. Well, so the guy's sitting there in the terminal and he's got 50,000 leeches in containers that he should not have. And some uh, uh, contraband sniffing beagle, which I thought the only thing beagles were good for were like hunting and barking really obnoxiously, comes walking up to this guy and sits. And right away, they were clued in as soon as the dog came up and sat down next to the dude with the leeches that he, there was something up. They stopped him, searched his bags. He was flying in from Russia, had all the leeches. You can't do that. Bust it. The quantity suggests that because first he said, oh yeah, they were, they were for personal use. 5,000 leeches. The quantity suggested something else. The plan may have been to find buyers for the parasitic worms which could be put to, uh, for these uses, as they say, treating frostbite and helping with recovery from facelifts. You know, boy, if, if uh, getting frostbite wasn't bad enough, here, put some leeches on the dead skin and have them eat it off. Hey, man, this, uh, this facelift isn't healing right. Can somebody please put some leeches on my face? Perhaps that'll make things a little better. All right. That's it. I'm out of gas. Circling the drain again. Uh, don't forget EricZaneShow.com for everything you need, including the Patreon. Sign up for Tier 2. I've got another 32 minutes ready to go for today's podcast. For Starting at 5 bucks a month at EricZaneShow.com. All right. Stay warm. Don't get uh, caught in the cold. Have some survival kit, warm coat, you, know, you name it. Be careful. We'll talk to you down the road, and tomorrow we'll be back with another freebie of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.